here. So today we are going to be learning how to create a national park poster in Illustrator. And there's a lot more history to them than I thought there was. So I got, as I got into researching them, I was going to teach it to my students and I thought, you know what, I really wanted to see if there was much to it. And I found out that there is way more to the National Park posters than I actually thought. Um, so let's kind of jump into the history and then we're going to find a reference and then we're going to get started. So in 1935, when FDR created the New Deal, he had 6.7% uh, of the GDP was set aside to help employ people, unemployed people, get jobs either building bridges or fixing up national parks. But then also of that, he reserved money to pay artists and poets and musicians. And in that, he had um, peep the national parks uh, create the posters. Now, they all, artists also worked to create murals, they also create sculptures, and they did a lot of other things that kind of helped with uh, national parks, but they made a lot of promotional posters to get people to kind of come back into the parks to see what they were, and so they made posters. And they made a lot of posters. And out of the 1,400 posters that they made, there's only like 41 still remaining, and out of those 1,400, only 14 of the original designs still exist. And most of this is actually due to the efforts of a ranger, uh, a retired park ranger called Ranger Doug. And um, I found this really great article, I'll link it below, um, that was created by Popular, Popular Mechanics about Ranger Doug and his search for these missing posters to kind of find the history of them. And so I thought it was just really fascinating. I thought parks just made them for promotional purposes. I didn't realize that it was rooted in the New Deal and without that it was like employed by the government like to help get artists back into their jobs and stuff and so I just think that something that is so iconic to the park posters and everything it's just kind of the forgotten history of how the park posters came to be. So with that little nugget of history, let's jump into um, the aesthetics of it, how to open an Illustrator program, and then also picking your picture for this project. All right, so once you open Illustrator, and I have to say I'm using Illustrator 2020, um, my computer is quite old, and so it's using an older version of Illustrator. So your Illustrator might look just a scotch different than mine at this point, but um, just to kind of give you that update. Anyway, I like to start with just a standard letter size for my Illustrator project for this. I also like to make my posters in vertical aspect ratio because that's typically what your promotional poster would look like is me in vertical. Um, and then I am going to drag in my project. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to place and I'm going to find it on my desktop. Now I have a hot mess of stuff on my desktop, so ignore that. I'm going to use this one. Now the uh, poster I like to use, I like to use um, one that has got a decent amount of hills and variety of colors. A lot of times if you end up um, making your uh, making your picture have too much busyness in it, you're going to find yourself like working harder than you need to. And now that I'm looking at this, like this is going to be a little bit of work here to kind of get that shading in, but I can kind of smooth it out for the most part. But having nice hills is a good one. I like to have a lot of little bit of negative space in the top too. It's kind of a nice way of setting it up. So all on the same layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to properties and then I'm going to go to this guy first. So I am going to on this create a shape just filling the whole page. Now, obviously this is just white. I'm going to go into fill. I am going to go to gradient here, and then I am going to set my gradient. So I'm going to edit my gradient. I am going to make it go like this. I'm going to move it a little bit to the side here. Oopsies. Like, like this. I'm going to move it to the side and I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to bring this guy up from here. I'm going to grab the little ink dropper. I'm going to take it from the side 
And then I'm going to go back to my other side and taking the ink dropper, I'm going to go to over here. There. So now I kind of have that nice little from top to bottom. I get that nice little gradient there. Now it isn't the way I want it to be. So I'm going to switch this so that it's at 90. So it goes like that. Then if I go to here, I can swap the up and the down. Now I can dr go back to my black arrow key, drag it over or well, I call it the black arrow key, but this is selection tool and this is direct selection tool. So now I have my little guy there. Now I want my gradient to show more up at the top. So I'm going to go back to my gradient and I am going to get it to, I'm going to edit my gradient again, and I'm going to drag this up to the top. So I have a very slight gradient at the top. That's how you can control how much gradient you actually get in this. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm going to go to here and I'm going to grab my background picture, go to arrange, bring to front. And I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to treat it like I'm working from all the way back. So I started with my back background and I'm going to start building from there into each layer getting closer and closer and closer. There's a lot of hills back here, so I'm not going to take all of them, but now I'm going to go to my pen tool and I'm going to go right to the edge here and I'm just going to kind of see my little gradient. Now it's going to keep the gradient. I'm just going to take this all like it's one big mountain here. You can use a little bit of the like tool and I'm going to create a bib. I'm, you can go all the way to the bottom, but I'm just going to create a bib so that the next layer will just cover it. And, um, I kind of think of this like creating like a dicky. <laughs> so if you don't know what uh, a dicky is, <laughs> it is like, uh, um, D the, uh, like the, the old shirt that looks like a, like a turtleneck. <laughs> but then it just goes into your shirt just a little bit. And so that's what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to go to here. I'm going to select this guy to fill that space. All right. I'm going to take my ink dropper. There we go. And I want that. There we go. Now it's the color I want it to be. All right. So then back to my selection tool. If you want to speed this up, instead of going like this, V is the direct select tool. And then I go to arrange, bring it to the front. And now it's to the front. Now, if I want to avoid making each of these, like I have been changing my color after the fact. If I go into here, I select this. I'm going to ignore this one. I'm going to select this guy next. Now the color is already set, so I don't have to do it in advance. So if I pick color first and then do it, I am a little better shape. So I'm going to move a little closer so I can really get these details. Like I said, there's such a slight difference between these mountains. You can really do that, but you don't necessarily need to. So this is pretty much just kind of the repeat now. Now, if you would like to, you could kind of go over it like this, click on the pen tool, drag it so it kind of can make that shape, and then you click the anchor point. And so that's how you can make a little bit more smooth lines. But uh, since it's very, it's kind of far away, very far out, just the straight lines kind of work too. So then again, make my little dicky, <laughs> my little uh, turtleneck of sorts down into this. I then go to V, click on the background, arrange, bring it to the front. Now I can go back again. So I'm going to do a little bit of work, kind of speed past this, and uh, then I will come back to kind of show you the next few details. All right, so I have done all the base first layers and they're under here and uh, I haven't looked at it yet. So you get to be a part of the big reveal. So I'm gonna go to this and all the way to the back and I get to see what I've done so far. So this looks pretty good. And for most of this, I'm not actually gonna do too many other like fixes. I might fix this color shade right here cause it's kind of jarring in comparison to this one. I think it was just the way I color picked. 
But for the most part, I'm not going to do anything to these, but I am going to do just a little bit of detail of a secondary layer of, um, like, a like texture and stuff on this one. And then I'm also going to trace this tree. And so again, with this tree, I'm going to take the pen tool and I'm probably going to do this first because the tree will actually add such a big, um, influence to the center here that I probably won't need to add too many other details, but I am going to add like the caps of these little shadows here to kind of add little details. And the more little things you can do to it, the better to kind of create that, that look of, uh, you know, just that the edge of the stamp kind of thing. So I'm going to just kind of roll through some of these and then I'm going to show you kind of the reveal. So, uh, first though, I'm going to kind of show, um, as you do the pen tool around the tree, you want to zoom in so you can really see, and you want to be pretty careful as you're going. Um, and one other thing is as you get going, you might notice your pen tool is kind of getting in the way of itself. So see how this it's the fill is here. You can turn off the fill so it does nothing until you're absolutely ready for it to show the color that you want. So that's the other thing. And I, um, I think that trees actually look kind of cool when they are a little bit more abstract in this particular, oopsies, I accidentally clicked it, whatever. Um, I like them when they're just a little bit more abstract, so I don't have to try and get every tiny little detail of this, but I am going to try and get most of the edges so you can tell like roughly what the type of tree is from the silhouette. And so, yeah, that's kind of the goal is to not get too much but yet just enough so that you can still tell what kind of tree it is really zooming in getting each of those little areas so that you kind of have this like little vector stamp of a tree all right i'm gonna keep going all right so i pulled my photo to the side i finished up kind of the details of the tree and as i was doing the tree like i was thinking ugh, like these little shapes are not working for me but then now that i see it zoomed out i actually think it looks pretty good they aren't like like those little, some of the lines that I thought weren't detailed enough look just fine. Now, if I wanted to get a little bit more detailed, I might go in and do like some of the reflect, like highlights on the tree itself to kind of give a uh, gradient to it. I might go and do some highlights and lowlights and texture in the fields, but there's a lot of colors going on in here. And one of the things about, uh, posters and that style is that it was woodcut, meaning we had a limited color palette. And so even though I, I think that I would encourage people to put a little bit more detail, if you aesthetically are like, I want to hold myself back. I don't want to get too crazy. That is also fine. So I'm going to kind of stop myself before I find myself getting too detailed in it. And I'm going to go into the next steps. So the next steps are just to kind of finish off your finishing touches. And so the first one that I like to do is I like to give my poster a border. So I follow the square of my actual space. I make it no fill and then I go to the stroke. Um, and once I'm in there, I'm going to give it kind of like a, uh, a cream look here and I'm going to make it much, much thicker and I'm going to try and match it to the, like the, the kind of the look here. All right. All right. I'll, I'll just kind of stick with that. I think that's fine for right now. Six and a half hours later. I say I'm going to stick with that and then I move on to something else. Uh, all right. I'm happy with that. I think that's good. Okay. So once I've set my border, um, I'm going to go to here and I get to uh, do my uh, letters. So I'm going to go to text and I'm going to smack in the middle. Now, one thing that a lot of people do is they try and draw a box with their text boxes. Don't do that. It just is excess space. Um, all right. So I've got here and I don't know where this is. So I'm going to just call it, uh, the planes. And then I'm going to make this bigger. My adjustments are right over here. I'm going to go that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into here and I'm going to play around with text. Now, one thing that it's important to do is text or font really makes a big difference 
in your project. Fun fact, sometimes picking fonts takes me way longer than anything else. Like I'll sit there and I will like read fonts and I'll have worked for 25 minutes on my picture and then I'll spend another 45 minutes picking out the correct font for it. And you can see already like this one is awful. That's a terrible font where this one is okay, but there's something wrong with it. Like So kind of go through it. I actually think the first one I had was probably the best for my particular style is this. I'm just going to go like brochure. I'm going to go brochure style on this. Next thing you can do is you can kind of choose its position on the page. So kind of move it around. We'll look better in the middle. We'll look better further out. Um, are you going to bring it into the mountains and make it look like it's coming from behind? Like if I did this, just like that, so then I can, I can kind of have it be like, look like it's coming out of those mountains, which is kind of a cool look too, if you really want it to be. So yeah. So those are kind of my suggestions for putting on your last little details and then uh, kind of finishing it off. When it's time to export, you go to File, Export, and then you go Export As. And then what you want to do is make sure you say Use Artboards. And what that means is it's just going to take the what's inside the black border of the paper you chose. If you do not so do use artboards, it's going to select everything. And so I'm going to just call it this the planes. And I'm going to make sure it goes to my desktop. I click use artboards. I'm going to have it as a PNG. And then I'm going to export. And then I'm just going to say OK. And that is it. All right. So that's pretty much it. Uh, here are a few examples. I'll just kind of flash them past the screen here as we go. A lot of these were, the first two were done by me, but then the rest of them were done by students of mine. And so it's a really nice intro to Illustrator because it gives you a pretty good, um, kind of a simplified uh, experience for all the tools that you really want to use for Illustrator without it being to the point where Illustrator can be very frustrating, almost to the point of like a rage quit because it's, it's not the same as Photoshop, but it feels like it should be. And you hear Illustrator and you think it'd be more artistic, but it actually ends up feeling more constricting. And so uh, it's kind of, I always say that Illustrator is like the math of the digital art world. It like, if you like, some people really like math. Some people are really good at math, but hate it. That's how Illustrator is. Some people are good at Illustrator. Some people are good at Illustrator and hate it. And some people just can never seem to get it, just like math. And so I feel like this little project kind of gives people the confidence to not give up on it. So um, a couple things that I would give as advice to for your own is how can you make it more of your own? It doesn't necessarily need to be a United States poster. How can you add little details so that yours stands out from the rest? But otherwise, just have fun with it. It's a fun project. So I hope you enjoyed this and good luck making. 